Here's one for you to consider today. How many famous mountain victories in cycling were made or feature a breakaway? Most, right? But how many feature a solo breakaway from the very start? Almost none. Yes, there is a breakaway during a climb, but it's usually right at the end, you know, in the last kilometer or so, when a rider senses an opportunity and goes flat out, they smell blood and they go for it. But they really don't tend to escape at the bottom of the climb and make their own way all the way up, gapping their teammates and their competitors all the way up that climb. And the reason for that is the topic of today's video, that drafting uphill is really important, maybe more important than you've ever considered before. Okay, let's establish some basics. Let's say that 10 watts, 10 watts difference between riders is a fairly appreciable difference, a fairly appreciable saving, if you like. If I was to offer you a 10 watt gain on your current FTP, I think most of you would take that. Let's also say that one minute faster up, you know, a fairly substantial climb is a pretty important gap in a pro race. Similarly, let's also say the half a mile an hour difference or 0.8 kilometers per hour difference is a pretty significant difference. If you could maintain that speed difference whilst racing in a race, particularly going uphill. Okay, now let's consider types of drafting. For sure, you can be drafting in a pace line, like a chain gang going along, varying your position, maybe your second, third, fifth in that chain gang. Or maybe you can be drafting in a bunch, of course, that's the biggest effect, cycling along, surrounded by people to the left, right, front, back, you know, that's the ideal, that's the maximum amount of draft gain you're gonna get. You're gonna shelter phenomenally in that wind. But you can also be drafting with one other person. Let's say you're the team leader, going uphill on a final climb. It's not unusual for you to have dropped your teammates and have only one other strong rider. If you look at these pro races, you know, even the teammates get gradually dropped and you end up with the race leader, often in second place, drafting behind their last super domestique who's hanging on for grim death. And the gap between them is generally about, you know, one to two meters. Okay, that said, before we get carried away and do any really fancy calculations here, I want you guys to have a guess. Let's take a second to have a think. Answer me this. When riding uphill, who do you think will benefit most from drafting? Do you think it's the strongest, like, semi-pro rider? Do you think it's a keen club rider? Or do you think it's the amateur rider, the beginner? Do you think, which of those, the strongest or the weakest rider in terms of watts is going to benefit most from drafting. Here's another question for you. When riding uphill and drafting, when do you think the cyclist is going to get most gain from drafting? Is it when the gradient is shallow or steep? And finally, what about this one? Do you think you'll get the same gains, more gains or less gains? If all the riders were on an aero bike as regard to regular bike or climbing bike when going uphill in terms of the draft advantage. Okay, have a think about that and you can answer this question above in the top right right now. Okay, let's make a start with the science. And as you know, this is Fast Fitness Tips and I hope you're convinced by our previous videos that we've got some credibility regarding being able to crack some of cycling's most difficult questions scientifically. And I guess there are two ways we can do this. We can calculate some of the savings from our calculators or apps that we have hidden up our long aero sleeves here at Fast Fitness Tips. Or, yes, to be fair, we could do a field test whilst riding our pill, let's say solo, maybe against then a drafted rider, maybe multiple trials, maybe multiple riders in randomized order measuring their physiological variables, measuring their watts and measuring their time. Yeah, we could do that too. Uh, that sounds like hard work to me, guys. But there's no need to reinvent the wheel if somebody's done it well or even better than us before. And we can use some of the science already put out by pretty much the world's expert on drafting. I'm going to shout out here to the Dutch professor, Bert Blocken, We've used his excellent paper before, which is called Surprises in Cycling Aerodynamics, to power our own drafting calculator, which we put out a while ago, and I'll put a reminder of that here. However, 
Although that drafting calculator is really clever and will calculate the benefits depending on your position in the peloton, depending on your position in the pace line, it only applied to riders riding on the flat. And here we're looking at cycling uphill, which brings another complication into this equation. But nevertheless, we do have some tools that enable us to look at the exact speed, power, and energy losses in terms of aero, in terms of gravity, in terms of rolling resistance, depending on all conditions. So if we break out that calculator and say we've got a 70 kilo cyclist, seven kilo bike, riding on a classic non-aero bike, fairly lightweight, but not super lightweight, in conditions where there's no wind, a good drivetrain, an appreciable but lowish rolling resistance, let's say CRRR 0.005. Okay, okay, I'm boring you now and the pages of variables that I could talk through, but let's just say, trust me on this one when I say the key point is, we're going to compare the difference between the solo rider and the drafted rider with all these background variables held the same, right? So yes, the key difference in science is we change one variable and we see the result. So in this experiment, we're going to change the variable of the aerodynamics, the drafted condition. Basically, we're going to have solo versus drafted. Now to keep things interesting, let's take five riders with various abilities. Let's start with, let's say 200 watts. Let's go to 250, 300, 350, and 400. So at one end, these are FTPs, we've got a rider with an FTP of 400 watts, which is like Neo Pro, Semi Pro. And we've got on the opposite end, a rider of 200 watts, which is not a raw beginner, but you know, it's somebody who's new to cycling. Now let's take five grades of hill. Let's take 2%, 4%, 6%, 8%, and 10%. And for comparison, let's also take 0%, i.e. riding on level ground. So we've basically got five riders riding solo at five inclines, plus zero of course, so that's six. So we can make then a five by six grid of their speeds, what their speeds would look like riding solo uphill. And here it is. Okay, that's a little bit ugly. Here's the graph instead. And now let's do the comparison guys. Let's do the same five by six table but allow that rider to draft, let's say one other cyclist just ahead of them at around about two meters gap. Yeah, you can get closer, but you can also fall further back. So let's average it out at two meters, and this is the table. All right, it's pretty ugly again. So let's take the difference table of the two. Now it's getting interesting. So this is the five by six. This is different riders ability on different grades. So this is the amount of extra speed that they would gain drafting uphill. And what do you notice? Well, you notice the smallest effect in speed is actually the weakest rider riding on the steepest grade. The biggest gain in speed is the strongest rider riding the steepest grade. But you can see the gains in speed are pretty appreciable. And we talked earlier about the kind of significance variables. These speed gains are mostly over half a mile an hour they're in kilometers an hour on, the, on your screen. So they're actually mostly over 0.8 kilometers an hour. And actually they peak at 2.2 kilometers an hour. But even the slowest rider goes up 0.3 kilometers an hour faster. All right, I see you're not impressed with 0.3 kilometers an hour faster, but what we can do is convert the speed into time savings. So let's say you go up a 13 kilometer climb over let's say an average gradient of 8%. Oh wait, that just happens to be the climb of Alp Duez, right? So let's say you're climbing Alp Duez solo. Now what would the times be for each of those riders? Okay, depends on our setup variables, things can vary, but for our riders in this experiment based on our calculator, Going up Alpe d'Huez at 200 watts will take almost 75 and a half minutes, whereas going up at 300 watts would take 52 and a half minutes, and going up at 400 watts will take around 41 minutes. Compare that to the drafted rider. At 200 watts, they'd go up at 72.6 minutes, and that's a saving 
of 2.77 minutes or 3.67%. And at the high end, the Neo Pro would go up at 39.21 or 1.62 minute saving, which is 3.96%. So basically in percentage terms, it's pretty flat. The rider drafted is gonna save 4% during that ascent. But you'll notice in terms of time, the lion's share of the saving is going to the slowest rider. The lion's share of the saving is going to the slowest rider. I'm gonna say that again. The slower the rider, the more they actually save in time when drafting another rider uphill. Boom, who knew that guy? Who knew that a slower rider would benefit more? This is exactly the same misunderstanding as those that say that slow riders don't benefit from aero. They do. Slower riders benefit more from aerodynamic changes to your bike or your position or your clothing than faster riders in terms of time on a course. Yeah, sure, faster riders probably benefit more in terms of what saved, but in terms of time saving, it's slower riders that benefit more. Tell that to your cycling buddies next time they argue that point. But the truth is, even a pro dancing on those pedals at 400 watts uphill the whole way is gonna save about one and a half minutes. And one and a half minutes, if you look at this table, is enough to go from 11th place Iban Mayo 2003 up to first. Or if you made a rider do it totally solo and they lost that 4% or they lost that 1.6 minute saving, it would take Marco Pantani's time down from first to around 10th or 11th. But wait guys, I haven't finished yet. We can also calculate this in terms of watts, because some of you want to know the watt saving, not the kilometer per hour saving or the time saving. So what I'm talking about now is what's the advantage in terms of watts of going in a draft versus solo uphill. And of course, the watt saving is gonna vary by the grade, right? It's also gonna vary according to the power that, you, that you're going up there with. And that's because the power dictates your speed, which dictates the draft advantage. So the result looks a lot like this. In fact, it looks exactly like this because this is the result and this is the graph. The watt savings go up exponentially with rider power, especially at lower grades. So the draft advantage is greater in terms of watts, the lower the grade of the hill. There's still an advantage going up steep hills, but the advantage is gradually diminishing. And the reason for that is the draft savings are obviously a function of the velocity of the rider, or basically the aero drag, which is a function of velocity squared. Okay, not exactly squared, but close to squared in simplified equations. Phew, that was a lot of science and some of you are still skeptical because we've based it all on our calculators which are based in science by the way but okay for you guys that are skeptical let's do a field test let's take 12 well-trained competitive cyclists and let's ask them to complete each of them two uphill time trials to make it feasible let's make it two to three kilometers okay 2.7 kilometers and let's make the hill fairly steep, almost mountainous conditions, 7.4%. Let's do it in randomized order, as I suggested before, and let them do it solo and then paced. Paced by a rider. Look, okay, I'm gonna allow the front rider to ride an e-bike or something that makes life easier to pace them. That's a lot of trials we're doing here with 12 cyclists, yeah? And let's measure everything. Let's measure time, let's measure power, let's measure heart rate, let's even measure their blood lactate. Well guys, we don't actually have to do it. Shout out to an awesome scientific study here, just out actually, in October 2018 by Theo Ouvrard. And it was published in International Journal of Sports Physiology and Performance. And the title, if you wanna look it up, is Mechanisms of Performance Improvements Due to Leading Teammate During Uphill Cycling. And the result from this awesome study is that the solo rider, their time improved by 3.1% during a drafted condition. Or roughly, they went from nine minutes five, I think it was, to eight minutes 30 or 40 on average, which is pretty much in line with our calculation. Don't forget, they had a diff slightly different condition. You know, they had 7.4% grade, for example. But you know what guys, here comes the shock from that paper. 
and this is an eye-opener for me because I didn't realize this myself that when they actually broke it down as to what explained these games going uphill sure aerodynamics were king 60% of the games came from pure aerodynamic games but it turns out that 42% of the games were actually due to psychological or motivational effects in short the rider being drafted was somewhat dragged up the hill by their teammate because psychologically motivationally they wanted to keep on that wheel they didn't want to be dropped and it's quite a powerful in fact it's a very powerful stimulus to ride behind a teammate and it actually felt easier than it really was riding behind the teammate than going up uphill solo sure it was definitely more difficult going uphill solo but it felt even more difficult if you know what I mean because of those psychological effects so my take home message guys for all of you riding uphill next time is when riding uphill on a big climb <laughs> it pays to have friends and that's because breaking away solo let's say at the foot of the climb and going all by yourself to the top is almost an impossible feat in competitive cycling because you would need to be roughly three to four percent better than your competitors not just to get away but to have the same equivalent speed and that is a massive difference between you know cyclists who are pretty much equally ranked at that kind of level okay guys i hope that was fun thanks for staying tuned and now you know as much as me and more than almost anybody else about the science behind cycling uphill in a drafted situation be sure to check out our other videos on our YouTube site. We've got more than 100 scientific cycling videos. And if you want to log on to Patreon, we've got a number of exclusives on there. And we release all these videos early anyway on the Patreon site. But for now, guys, have a great ride. And if you find yourself sheltering in the pack or behind a teammate whilst riding uphill on a steep climb, at least now you'll know why, right? Until next time, guys.